What's up, prize fighters? I'm Brian Tong, and the console wars are now embracing the 4K generation. But how much do the upgrades actually pay off? It's a throwdown showdown for game console supremacy between Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro and Microsoft's Xbox One S. Let's get it on. Round one is designed. Most of the time, consoles get smaller when they go for their first update. Sony did make the PS4 slim, but we're talking about 4K consoles here, and the PS4 Pro is actually bigger in size than the previous PS4. It's now a three-layer sandwich that's one pound heavier, deeper and wider in size by two centimeters, and just around the same height, but we're getting a lot more packed into that package. Now, the Xbox One S reduces its size from the previous Xbox One by 40%, and the power supply is in the console and not some extra brick. It's a nice compact package, and I like how they mix it up with white for the standard console color and controller. So, if we're just talking aesthetics, round one goes to the Xbox One S for me. Round two is navigation and interface. The PS4 brings an even cleaner single bar interface with their latest system software. It's simple to use and it really can't get any easier for a gaming home entertainment console. The Xbox One's interface takes a cue with the Windows 10 tile interface. I like all the game and video images, but it's a little messier to get around with its navigation bar that's throwing community, its one guide, and store at us with slightly different looks to all of them. Now it's just trying to showcase too much at once where the PS4 interface can do other things, but it's primarily focusing on the games. Microsoft brings face recognition and voice control with the Kinect, but the Xbox One S doesn't even include the Kinect anymore. The PS4 also supports facial recognition and voice commands through its add-on camera and headset as well, but I've never regularly used them for either console. The cleaner the better, and we're giving the PS4 round two. Round three is hardware. 4K support is what takes these consoles the next level up, but they do it differently. The PS4 can play 4K supported games and can stream 4K content from services like Netflix and Amazon, but its disk drive does not support 4K Ultra HD discs. The Xbox One S can also stream 4K content, but it's also one of the cheapest Blu-ray players that supports 4K Ultra HD discs, and if you're someone looking to upgrade your home theater system, it makes a difference. Sure, there are services that stream 4K content, but you still can't beat the fidelity from an actual disc. Both consoles support HDR content, and it's up to game developers to decide how they want to use the extra power available to them. It could be higher frame rates, higher fidelity textures, HDR support, or all three. It just depends, and moving forward, we'll see how developers really take advantage of this. Now, when it comes to console power, the Xbox One S gets a slight processing power edge from the Xbox One by overclocking the processor, but in most real-world tests, it helps keep frame rates locked in consistently. There's support for HDR, but there isn't a drastic amount of new power available for devs to play with. On the other hand, the PS4 Pro is a different story. An entirely new GPU and more efficient use of system memory has boosted its power 2.28 times compared to the original PS4, but again, it's up to developers to take advantage. The Xbox One also supports a cable connection for you to watch TV through it, and it might be a difference maker for you while Sony has their PlayStation View TV streaming service, but we're more focused on the gaming aspects here. So let's not forget that the PS4 platform supports this thing called PSVR, the most affordable and easy way to get a legit virtual reality experience. Now when it comes to hardware, you'll probably look at these consoles differently. Xbox One S has the drive, but the PS4 Pro has improvements that directly affect gaming. And until we see Microsoft's Project Scorpio, I'm picking the PS4 Pro this round. Next up is Game Library. Each console has their own flagship exclusives, and in a perfect world, we'd own both consoles. I mean, some of you do. Now, Sony has Uncharted 4, and Microsoft had Tomb Raider as their answer as an exclusive for a year. Microsoft has Halo, Gears of War, and Sunset Overdrive. Sony has Bloodborne, Rocket League, and Last of Us Remastered. Now, we know about all the blockbusters on both consoles, like Call of Duty, Battlefield, and I gotta show love to my NBA 2K ballers, but the list of games from both consoles with improved graphics, better frame rates, or HDR support is all over the place, but at the moment, the PS4 Pro has more titles available. Now, I won't turn my back on the Xbox's backwards compatibility. It's important, but I'm playing newer games compared to ones from four to five years ago. And this always comes down to a personal preference, but Sony gets the edge here not only for its great indie games, it has a longer list of games that are supporting the new power available to it, but it's also the ability to enter the world of VR that you just can't do with the Xbox One S at the moment. Advantage, 
PS4 Pro. The final round is Valve. Microsoft listened to the people and put out a console without a Kinect, and it helps the price at $299. The best way to sum this up, the Xbox One S has two terabytes of storage and one of the most affordable 4K Blu-ray Ultra HD Disc players and HDR support for $299. Now the PS4 Pro brings more raw power, a one terabyte drive with 4K streaming and HDR support for $399. But if we're talking just pure value, I'm going to lean on the Xbox One S and it takes this final round. So let's take a look at the breakdown. The Xbox One S took design and value, while the PS4 took user interface, hardware and game library. But the final decision always comes down to you. The Xbox positions itself as really more than a game console with cable TV capability and now a 4K Ultra HD disc on top of a gaming console. The PS4 Pro is even more focused on gaming than ever with the addition of its PSVR. So if you already own the previous generation of either of these consoles, it's even hard for me to recommend an outright upgrade for either one unless you're committed to a 4K HDR TV set moving forward. But if you're still deciding between the two right now and you could only pick one and you're telling me I have to pick one, I'm going to go PS4 Pro with the hope that developers truly take advantage of the new power moving forward, but ultimately you're going to be happy with either one. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another prize fight. <laughs>